I'm about to show you three keys on your keyboard that are gonna save you a ton of time while editing. And to prove it to you, I'm gonna edit an entire sequence using just the keyboard, no mouse, just, just the keyboard. And in case you were wondering, those three keys are J, K, and L. Here, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what I mean. Now I've got a quick little sequence set up in DaVinci Resolve. It's just a sequence of some guys skateboarding here. I'll play through it real quick so you can see what I mean. Let's go ahead, there we go, play through. See, we got mountains, we got a guy snowboarding, we've got a guy snowboarding, another guy snowboarding, two guys snowboarding, two guys, one guy, one guy, mountains again. This is all stock footage that I got from ArtGrid, which is where I get all my stock footage from. If you wanna check them out, they are linked below. Now, real quick, let's go back to the beginning of this timeline. Let me show you how most people start editing. Most people, the first thing they learn is that spacebar will play your video. Spacebar again will pause your video. And then if you wanna navigate frame by frame, you hit left to go backwards and you hit right to go forwards. Now that's fine, it's all well and good, it does work. Those keys are there for a reason, but it does pose one problem that you probably haven't even thought of. And that is when you're doing it that way, when you are navigating using the space bar and the arrow keys, your hands are way down here at the bottom of the keyboard, which leaves all these keys up here kind of out of reach. If you want to use them, you got to move your hand all over the place and you can lose track of where you're at. You can lose track of the keys that you want to use it, and it wastes time. Every second counts when you're editing, especially when you're up against a deadline. Now, let me show you J, K, and L. If I want to play forward, I hit L. And if I want to pause, I hit K. And if I want to play in reverse, I hit J. Now, here's where it gets really cool. Let's say I'm playing forward and I want to play forward at two times the speed. I just hit J again. And if I hit it again, I'm at four times the original speed. Eight, 16, 32, and 64. And it works in reverse as well. Hit J, normal speed, two times speed, four times speed, eight times speed, 16, 32, and 64. Honestly, I don't know why you would wanna go 64 times the original speed, but the option is there. Now let's look at playing in slow motion. If I wanna play forward in slow motion, I hold down K and I hold down L, and now I'm playing forward in slow motion. If I wanna play in reverse in slow motion, I hold down K and I hold down J, and now I'm going in reverse. And to navigate frame by frame forwards, I hold down K and I tap L. And to navigate in reverse frame by frame, I hold down K and I tap J. Now navigating using J, K and L as opposed to the space bar and the arrow keys does a couple things. One, it gives you more functionality. Instead of just starting, stopping and navigating frame by frame, I can now start, stop, navigate frame by frame, play in reverse, play in slow motion and play at increased speed. It also allows me to do my navigation with just one hand, which frees up my other hand to do whatever it needs to do. The last thing that this does is it moves my hand to the middle of the keyboard, making the other keys easier to reach. For example, if I'm playing through, let's play through at two times speed. And let's say I wanna set an in point here and I can play again, two times speed. Let's say I wanna play an out point there. I can do that, hit Alt X to get rid of those. Let's say I wanna keep on playing and maybe set a marker right there. I can hit M, hit M again. We'll go ahead and call this wall of snow, hit enter, we got a marker there. And you see what I mean, my hands can go wherever they need to go, they barely need to move, it's great. So hopefully by now you can see that using J, K, and L instead of spacebar and arrows will actually help you save time while editing, and that's good. I like saving time, which is why I love today's sponsor, Taskade. Here's the deal, I'm a busy guy. I'm a freelancer, YouTuber, dad, you get the idea. And as a busy guy, I need a way to keep all of my stuff organized. Taskade allows me to keep track of my video ideas, my freelance projects, projects and even my day-to-day -day personal tasks all from within one app. And the best part 
it's 100% free. It even allows me to share my projects with other people and make video calls right from within the app, which makes planning collaborations super easy. Lately, I've been using Taskade to plan my videos, track their progress, and keep track of my sponsorship deals. I've even created custom templates for all that stuff that I can use over and over again. One of my favorite features of Taskade is the fact that I can view all of my projects in different ways. So I can look at it as a bullet point, I can look at it as a checklist, I can even look at it as a mind map. So whatever way your brain works, Taskade has you covered. Taskade helps me get a bird's eye view of my entire life. So if that sounds like something that would be useful to you, go ahead down to the description of this video, click the link and try out Taskade today. All right, in the beginning of this video, I said I was gonna edit an entire sequence without touching my mouse. Let me show you exactly how I do that. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is trim this first clip. I'm gonna figure out, we're gonna start right there. I like that, let's speed up. And I want to cut this right when these trees on the right disappear. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and do a ripple trim. And that's going to cut to this guy here. And I don't think I'm going to trim this clip. No, I think that's perfect. Okay. We've got the wall of snow here. Now he starts to emerge out of that wall of snow right there. So we're gonna go ahead, ripple trim from the end. And then we're gonna start this one as he's emerging from the, his wall of snow over here. Right there. And we've ripple trimmed again. So now if we go back, let's review that cut. That works. And now we're going to cut as soon as his head dips out of frame right there. And let's see what we got going on here. Play, playing in two times speed. And right there I think is a good place to cut. So let's ripple trim. And let's see if I can find a spot where they're both sort of in the middle of the frame. Maybe right there. We'll start that clip right there. Have them going, playing. I think right there is a good place to stop. Ripple trim. And we'll play this clip here. This clip seems to go on forever. So I think we're going to cut that right about there. It'll cut to this guy following behind him. And as we're looking down at that mountain, let's go ahead and cut to our ending shot of the mountain. And there you go. I just edited an entire sequence that had basically a rough cut without touching the mouse at all. All I did was J, K, and L and ripple delete. That was it, super easy. Now, one last thing back in DaVinci Resolve that I wanna show you. Let's say you were doing something with multiple tracks. So let's say that this clip right here was actually like a talking head clip and maybe you had a screen recording on top of it and you wanted to edit both these clips at the same time, let's say that the audio was synced up, if we had audio, if you don't have any of your clips selected, you can just go to where you want to cut. And again, you can ripple delete and it'll actually trim both of the clips. So there you go, quick little tip to speed up your workflow in DaVinci Resolve. If you wanna see some more workflow tips, check out this video right here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.